All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, beginning early tomorrow morning, Kentucky is going to experience what we believe will be a severe weather event that is going to be dangerous to extremely dangerous for most of the residents of the state. Uh, we are looking at uh, an ice storm that may make travel difficult to impossible at some times in various regions of our state and the amount of potential ice accumulation uh, could potentially result in the loss of power for uh, a large number of Kentuckians. So let me start by saying, if, if everything holds to where it is right now, this is the real deal. It is dangerous. People need to be prepared uh, and need to be prepared, especially to stay off the roads tomorrow and potentially deal, be, be ready to deal with this emergency for the next several days. So given uh, what we are seeing in the forecast, uh, I have declared a state of emergency today in anticipation of a major winter storm expected to hit Kentucky starting uh, late tonight and all the way through Friday morning, producing significant amounts of rain, sleet, snow, and most concerning to me, ice. A winter weather warning is in place across much of the Commonwealth. The powerful winter storm is expected to create difficult travel conditions on major interstates and state and local roadways. Tree damage and power outages may occur given the impacts from ice and wind. Snow is expected in the northwest and northern Kentucky, totaling one to two inches. The National Weather Service at Louisville has issued an ice storm warning for the Jackson Purchase and Penny Ryle regions and most of the rest of Kentucky north of the Cumberland Parkway. Ice accumulations, this is concerning. The expectation is anywhere from a quarter to three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch is debilitating uh, wherever it occurs. A flood watch has been issued for portions of South Central and East Central Kentucky uh, Thursday morning through late Thursday night as the area is expected to get two and a half to three and a half inches of rain. We've declared this state of emergency and you will hear in a minute to pre-position. Transportation, National Guard, and Kentucky State Police um, along or near major interstates and other thoroughfares so that we can respond to emergency situations. This is something that is rarely done, uh, but uh, the predictions about this storm are again, severe, and we want to be ready. Also, because of tomorrow's forecast and the fact that it is going to hit right before rush hour in many places, um, I'm closing state office buildings for tomorrow, Thursday, February 3rd, to keep thousands of state employees off the road and safe. These are people that I'm responsible for. Uh, these conditions appear that they will be treacherous. By not having them on the road, we'll protect the transportation, National Guard, and, and emergency management folks that will be out there dealing with the situation. We ask all of our state employees to refer to guidance issued by the Kentucky Personnel Cabinet. I've also issued an executive order to protect Kentuckians from price gouging that can occur during emergencies like this. That will prevent people from hiking up the costs of gasoline, food, and household items. This order uh, activates state laws that prohibit gouging. And if it happens, Kentuckians should contact the Attorney General's office at 1-888-432-9257. You can also go online, ag.ky.gov slash price gouging. Uh, given that we just mentioned online and a phone number, make sure you charge your phones tonight. Make sure you have a full charge going in tomorrow, just in case. Now, let's talk about our response efforts. Kentucky Emergency Management has activated the State Emergency Operations Center and personnel from the Kentucky National Guard, Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, Kentucky State Police, and Kentucky uh, Department of Public Health are monitoring the situation from the center. Transportation Cabinet, the State Police, and the National Guard are actively preparing for the storm to be ready to respond. Secretary Gray and others will further uh, discuss uh, how the, uh, I think Director Dossett will discuss how the storm system will begin as rain so roadways can't be pre-treated. Uh, and, and Secretary Gray will talk about this with brine and rock salt because it simply washes away. 
In other words, this isn't just a severe storm. The way it's coming in is going to make prevention of, of severe road conditions that much more difficult. It's also going to get really cold after it comes through. Uh, so let me make sure uh, that I remind Kentuckians, if you have a generator, if you use it wrong, it can kill you. And if we go back to the last big ice storm, well, before the last one while I was governor, but under Governor Steve Bashir, almost every one we lost was because they put the generator inside or not far enough from their homes. So please, if you have a generator, uh, make sure it is far enough away from your home to where you are not pushing carbon monoxide in that can and will kill you if it is too close to the house or inside. You can stay up to date by visiting snowky.ky.gov for snow and ice information, goky.ky.gov for traffic and roadway information. One of the biggest takeaways that we have had in the past for these events is if you could stay off the roadways, we prevent uh, potential loss of life. We prevent people from being in emergency situations. Um, we, we better protect all of our, our population and we allow our road crews to get out there and do the work that they need. Um, certainly, I encourage um, businesses uh, that, that can have their folks work remotely tomorrow to do so. Um, anybody working an essential uh, job where you're going to have to go in, please, first of all, have a lot of time, a whole lot of time to get where you're going, but check the conditions before you get in the car and check in with your employer as well. We want everybody to be safe. Uh, so next we're gonna hear from Director Dossett, and then we're gonna hear from General Lamberton, and finally we're gonna hear from Secretary Gray. Uh, so first, uh, the guy who every time he tries to retire, there is another emergency, uh, Director Michael Dossett. Thank you, Governor, and I am still pleased to be with you. Folks, this is going to be an epic event. Um, and uh, if you can put the slide up, I'll take you back in time to February of 2021. We had an ice storm. It was a bad storm. Uh, unfortunately, this one may easily top that. As the governor indicated, we're looking at 0.25 to 0.75 inches. Trees and power lines can't sustain that weight of that much ice. So you can look for power outages. Please prepare and I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do in just a second. But to begin the event, we're looking at between two and a half and three and a half inches of rain that will begin down in the western part of the state. The system will come from the northwest and traverse the state down through the southeast. Uh, the timing for the snow and ice is roughly 3 a.m. in the Paducah area and then moving up into the central and east area uh, somewhere afternoon. The temperatures are going to drop very, very quickly, and uh, Secretary Gray will cover a little bit about this. This is all dependent upon road temperatures. The National Weather Service has advised us that the temperatures will drop so quickly, there won't be a transition window. So when the ice falls, uh, it will accumulate and it will stick, uh, not only to roadways, but more importantly, uh, to transmission lines. So the impacts uh, could be widespread power outages. Localized flooding is certainly an option. As the governor indicated, we are taking uh, somewhat unprecedented actions of pre-staging assets. So we're looking at our transportation cabinet uh, key areas across the state, and we'll be bringing together Kentucky State Police, uh, the National Guard, our transportation uh, equipment, uh, emergency managers from local jurisdictions, and folks that can do welfare checks. So one of the things that's very important in this, and you'll hear all of us talk about this, if you don't have to travel, please stay off of the roadways, whether it be a local roadway, a highway, or an interstate. When stranded motorists have to be rescued, this takes precious resources away from those that are out trying to save lives. Because quite frankly, this will be a life-threatening event. Some of the safety tips that you can look for um, if you're, if you've lost power, certainly close all the drapes and put something by the doors and maintain uh, the heat that you have. This is an excellent opportunity to take um, 
the time to, to take and make phone calls to neighbors and, and to friends to ensure that your welfare uh, is, is okay at the time. If you're caught in a vehicle uh, during the ice storm, it is imperative that you take actions long before you have to get out. Uh, we certainly have the realization that there are emergency trips uh, that some of our, our citizens will have to make. Before you get out on a highway or an interstate, you need to have uh, you need to have water, snacks, blanket, something that can sustain you if you get into uh, one of these issues. This will come at a level where our transportation cabinet and our National Guard and our, our, our state police cannot interdict large areas of interstate. So when you're stalled in a long queue on an interstate, there'll be a timeline before we can get rescuers to you. So uh, the best advice is please stay off the roadways if you must travel uh, make it a short trip and uh, use all the awareness. Thank you, Governor. Next up will be uh, General Hal Lamberton. Thank you, Director Dawson. I appreciate it. As the governor's already alluded to, and it's the, the Kentucky National Guard working in conjunction with our partners out of emergency management, our partners out of the Department of Transportation in response to this ice storm that's upcoming at this junction. It's also already been alluded to what we are currently standing up or mustering our soldiers to gather them to some responsive hubs that will enable us to have a, a more quick or responsive uh, time frame to the issues of what may be out there. As it's been suggested already, that as we come out and we'll be setting up along some of the, the key interstate locations, some of the areas of high traffic ability, and in particular working with our partners out of the Department of Transportation to muster some of our vehicles that you may recall had been responsive in some of the, the previous storms that we've had some of our, what we call a Hemet tow truck. It's a, a five ton truck capable of pulling out large stuck commercial vehicles. We're having some of our Humvees respond to this as well. It's a, a high wheeled vehicle that it's capable of pulling people out of uh, stuck positions as well. And uh, the one thing I wanna uh, share as well, Director Doss had just uh, alluded to it, uh, I would consider this first phase kind of a uh, the response to the immediate ice storm that we're anticipating within the next 24 hours. Subsequently, there's what I would call a phase two, which would go into a, a collective effort of potential wellness checks, of getting out in the communities, of clearing not just vehicles, but debris off of the, the roadways to facilitate the, the traffic ability. And then it's a uh, forward phased operation from there. Having said this, I wanna share with everybody as well that the, the guards, your guards capability to respond in this manner does not take away from those other items that we're already responding to. Our soldiers, our airmen who are up in 44 medical facilities, around the Commonwealth today will still be there. Our folks who are responding still to the aftermath of the tornadoes of almost two months ago are still out there. So, so this is just a, another aspect of your Kentucky National Guard being able to partner with the, the rest of the, the resources in our Commonwealth to address to the folks. And the uniqueness of this particular storm system enables us to pre-position ourselves in advance of the, the storm and just simply be more responsive to the entire Commonwealth. That said, Secretary Gray. I think, I think the, gen the general said it well and it's appropriate to be behind, have this Team Kentucky behind us because that's exactly what this represents and the word collaboration. When I think of all of these events, Governor, that we've had in the last several months and longer, um, that's the word that defines it. And it's teamwork and it's collaboration. And we all remember there's no I in teamwork. Um, Governor, you said earlier, this is the real deal. And you're absolutely right about that. Um, you know, nature can be generous and nature can be unforgiving. 
And this is one of those events where nature is unlikely to be forgiving. It will be, nature will be unforgiving. The governor said it, the general said it, the director said it, uh, the National Weather Service has said it. I was on an hour long call with them just about 45 minutes ago and they use this language. Already we are predicting difficult to impossible travel conditions Thursday into Friday morning. So that makes it critically important as you all already heard for folks to stay off the roads while temperatures are freezing. The public's safety is our top priority and our top concern. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet will use every available highway crew plus contractors. This means as many as 1,300 pieces of equipment plus contractors and upwards of 2,000 available employees in the Department of Highways. State Highway Engineer James, James Ballinger is here today. Uh, with me and he's shaking his head in agreement with that so we know governor that that's exactly what's being deployed they will do everything possible to make the roads passable but this is a dynamic system a difficult type of weather system to deal with it begins with rain and then it steadily changes to freezing rain and ice with snow on top so it makes it really challenging the rain prevents our ability to pre-treat roadways with brine or rock salt. It would simply all wash away. The freezing rain and ice does more than just make roads slick. It carries the danger of downed trees and power lines on roadways that creates additional hazards. <clears throat> to stay up to date, visit snowky.ky.gov let me say that again, snowky.ky.gov for snow and ice information and goky.ky.gov for traffic and roadway information. Now, we ask you to help us serve you this winter season by doing the following four things. Mask up to slow the spread of illness and to keep our essential personnel safe. COVID has put a challenging challenging condition on our road crews. And we also see the challenges of the work environment where people are simply uh, the challenge of employees employment today. So this is what we're all dealing with. We ask you to limit travel to only what is necessary when there's snow and ice on the roads. Give our snow plows plenty of room on the road. Be ready for the worst when you're on the road by making sure your vehicle is winter ready and you have essential items should you be stranded. Uh, that's it, <clears throat> Governor, thank you. All right, we'll open it up to questions. We'll start with Bodie here in uh, 110. Governor, you said this uh, could affect travel for several days and folks should prepare for several days. Well, in the very least, Thursday and Friday will be treacherous. The event is going to go um, through uh, Friday. Uh, then the question is, what, what did we get? Uh, what's the temperature and what's the ability to treat and, and ultimately clear those roadways? How many power lines do we have down? So, you know, if, if this hits as hard as some of the previous ice storms, knocks out power, knocks down huge numbers of, of lines. We're, we're going to be dealing with something longer than a couple days. We all hope uh, that it could be a 48-hour event. If it is, we'll all be pleased. But if it hits anywhere near uh, what we're looking at, it's going to be longer depending on how hard an individual area is hit. You know, the predictions for uh, uh, the purchase area are really rough at the moment. Well, certainly um, uh, the rain will, will have to end. Um, and, and then I believe as we're getting the freezing rain, uh, James will be, will be out there treating at that time. 
Um, so at the moment that they believe that it's not going to be washed out, uh, that it's solid enough, they'll be out there. Now, how fast they can do it will depend in large part on how many other people are on the road, right? So if people will stay off the roads, they can they can treat them faster. Again, if we if we have down power lines and the rest, that's going to make it harder to treat and, and clear those roads. Karen? One thing on one percent. Gray. Um, I actually just have a text option made and asked someone to post that they're going MTI, they're not even going to connect with it. Would you prefer that schools at this point do that tomorrow? Would that help? And then for Secretary yeah. Gray, because of COVID, how are how staffing uh, for the period? So I think schools need to take, in the very least, um, a real strong look at the timing of when this is going to hit. Uh, for many of them, it would hit when you're trying to get kids to school. For others, it would hit while you're trying to get kids home from school. Uh, I wouldn't close state office buildings if I didn't believe this was going to be a, a severe event. And I'd be really concerned, um, especially at the swath of Kentucky, that's going to get hit the hardest about buses out on the roadways. This isn't very fair uh, to our kids, um, but uh, we want to keep them uh, physically safe. Uh, yeah, Karen, the good news is that the, uh, the numbers of COVID infections are actually down in the cabinet. And so our crews, we are actually fully staffed today. And we have contractors in addition that are assisting us. So all prepared. Thank you. All right, uh, Mark Payne, welcome. Nope. Okay, Melissa Patrick. Hi, Governor. Um, so uh, Mr. Gray's uh, comments about COVID and encouraging people to wear masks sort of opens up the door for me to seek comment on uh, Senator McConnell's floor speech today saying it's time to wind down uh, the COVID state of emergency, stating uh, we have vaccines to prevent hospitalizations, level of risk is similar to other uh, levels of risk, doesn't impact children, uh, much and metrics are down. It's time to get back to normal. So I'm just seeking comment on his floor speech today around, is it time to get back to normal? Well, we're already pretty close to, to normal or at least the normal he's describing when uh, as long as cases aren't too high, all of our school systems are back uh, in person. We don't have anything closed uh, across the state. There are even large sporting events that are uh, occurring. You hear a lot of rhetoric about opening up, but we are open. Now, to fully uh, unwind a state of emergency would mean we couldn't have National Guardsmen uh, in hospitals uh, helping them, them out. We still have a huge number of cases. We still have a huge number of people dying. So I think that we can be in a uh, new normal as hopefully cases continue to fall where we make smart choices. But you know, right now there's, there's nothing closed. Uh, in Kentucky. We've been open for business. We had our best year ever for business. We've had the largest uh, budget surplus in our history, which we only have if people in business are, are doing better. So at some point, we've got to get away from the, the rhetoric um, that seems to be used uh, for political terms and address the reality of where we are, uh, which is open, but also that there are still risks out there. And I think people are smart enough to be able to process both, right? That, that we need our economy uh, open, our kids in school, which is happening at the same time, wear a mask at a big sporting event, right? It's going to protect you. We can all do those things. And, and I, I, I am concerned about any comments that, that, that would lessen uh, uh, people getting vaccinated. Uh, we still uh, need uh, so many more to get vaccinated. Our vaccinations are slowing down. Uh, which is concerning. Uh, certainly, we need more people to get boosted as as well. Uh, maybe Senator McConnell was talking about other parts of the country that still have, um, you know, different different actions in place. But here, uh, all we're trying to do is to be smart, to help our hospitals, to uh, get more people tested and and vaccinated. Um, we're open. We've been open. We've been open for a long time. Uh, Austin Horn, Lexington Herald Leader. Thank you, Governor. Got a couple questions. I'm I'm wondering if uh, you guys have any numbers that you've compared 
this potential storm to 2020 and even 2003. And I'm also curious if there's a plan to have uh, warming centers in the event of mass power outages. So numerous counties are preparing warming centers right now. I was at the county judge conference and had a, a number of those conversations. You know, I got asked a question about 2003 earlier today, and I was thinking 1994 uh, when we had one too, uh, because I was the 1994 prevented me from getting my driver's license for an extra week, which at the time, I guess um, I thought was unfair, but it's a major natural disaster. Uh, certainly, we think that this storm has the potential uh, to be worse uh, than, than the one from about a, a year ago. Uh, I think it's hard to compare all the way back to 03, unless Director Dossett has those numbers in front of him. All we'd say is it has the chance to be really severe. Uh, some of those uh, ice storms also lingered uh, for a significant period of time. Well, the roads were iced over certainly in 90. Uh, four for a week, uh, and certainly we we hope that those conditions um, won't be present in in this one. Uh, but with all that said, this is an incredibly dangerous, severe event. We need people to be careful. The rain that's starting uh, the event is going to keep us from pretreatment, which is going to make it all the more dangerous. Director Dossett, you can. We. In comparison, we do have a graphic from uh, the 2009 ice storm, which was the historic storm for the state. And in that one, we experienced uh, up to one and a half inches of ice. So it will not reach those proportions. However, the highest accumulation predicted is 0.75 inches. So you can do the math. This will be an extremely serious event. And it's also coupled with uh, wind. We have uh, predictions of wind gusts up to 25 miles an hour, which also impacts um, power lines. And April Rickert. Thank you very much. Uh, just to clarify one of the last questions, should people look to their county level organizations for to learn where to go in like a, a large emergency situation, like a, a large place to stay to get warm? And secondly, how could this impact those already affected by the tornadoes or any resources going to those folks? Thank you. So, so local emergency management will be working in conjunction um, uh, with us to set up warming centers. They'll be working in their counties. We will make sure to post that information on our website, on the overall emergency website. We'll get that up on transportation too. Uh, I know it'll be broadcast locally as well. Um, and, and provided that we have the power to broadcast. Uh, I'm going to be here tomorrow making sure that we are giving updates and we'll provide as much of, of that information as possible. Was there a second part of the question? Uh, April, can you? Oh, Western Kentucky. Um, <laughs> Western Kentucky continues to get hit. You know, um, that's not right. They've already been hit by the worst tornadoes in our history by far, and uh, they're going to be right in the brunt of the most ice uh, that we've seen in, in, in a long time. Um, it will make cleanup efforts harder. Um, it, it is likely that, that at least some of the crews, if we are having a serious weather event, will not be out for their own uh, safety. Um, some of our transportation crews may have to be uh, moved over to ensure that we have uh, safe roadways. Um, anything that slows down cleanup is, um, is not a good thing, but remember, um, protecting the lives of our citizens and the citizens in that region uh, is our, our, our number one objective. All right, thank you all very much. Stay safe if you can, stay off the roads beginning tomorrow morning. Gonna be rain tonight as well. Stay safe. Uh, with everything we've been through the last two years, we don't want to lose anybody to this. Thanks.